Tennessee Titans and the Indianapolis Colts were really close on getting deals done. The two sides, quote unquote, haven't had any conversations. Colts and Chiefs. So it seems like someone is not being truthful about the luxurious need trade situation. And in this video, I'm gonna process through it all as we attempt to figure out what the heck is going on. On top of that, Hollywood Brown signed his contract today and spoke to the media, revealing why he chose KC over other teams. So let's talk about all that and more. But first, how about those? <laughs> First up, Hollywood Brown officially signed his contract today, showed in his Instagram stories that he's wearing number five with the Chiefs, and then spoke to the media about his decision to sign with KC, what they can expect from him this season, and more. He was first asked if other teams were interested in him, and he said he really left that up to his agent, but told his agent KC was one of the teams he'd like to play for, and it ended up working out. Of course, Patrick Mahomes was a big reason why he wanted to be here, but also gave other reasons like playing for Andy Reid, the winning culture and Casey's style of offense fitting his strengths. Quote, of course I can go get some money at other places, but at the end of the day, it's about winning and what I want and everything just worked out the way it should be. So some took that as he was actually offered more by other teams and he confirmed there were other opportunities out there for sure, but quote, I'm happy with my decision and where I'm at. He's a kid that's come from nothing. So the amount of money he's made in his life is a blessing, but he wants to win in that is why he is here in Kansas City. Well, the Chiefs certainly know how to win, so you pick the right place, let's freaking go. Hollywood loves the idea of playing for the Chiefs and even thought they might end up drafting him based on their pre-draft discussions back in 2019, but he was selected in the first round by the Ravens. Meanwhile, the Chiefs didn't have a first round pick because of the Frank Clark trade and ended up drafting McCall Hardman in the second round instead. So that was an interesting little tidbit. He then mentioned he stays out in Texas, so he'll be training with Mahomes and whoever else is around as early as this week since Mahomes trains out there as well in the off season. He added what he loves to see about Mahomes and his performance is that he's passionate, wants to win, and will do whatever it takes to get that W. Hollywood operates in that same mindset and he believes Mahomes will help bring out the best in him and that's why he's excited to get to work. Marquise is of the opinion there's a lot of his game. He doesn't believe he's yet been able to show people and his time in KC is gonna allow him to put his best foot forward. He basically feels rounded in his strength being able to impact all three levels of the field, short, intermediate, and deep balls. With his previous two teams, he's been able to show some of that at times, but not consistently. However, on this Chiefs team, he feels like there's enough pieces in place offensively that will allow him to showcase this on all levels of the field much more consistently. And then in a quick guaranteed salary update on March 16th, some guarantees kicked in for three players on the roster, with those being Jawan Taylor, Charles Aminahue, and Joe Tooney. Jawan had 20 million of his 2025 salary kick in. Yes, you heard that right. Next year's salary, with this year already coming in with a cap hit of 24.7 million and a dead cap of 54 million. Then, 2 million of Aminahue's base salary for 2024 is now guaranteed, which makes me think he will indeed be staying around for this season. Fine by me, he's a solid player and really helped KC last year when he wasn't going through the suspension. The kicker for this season though, and why people mentioned Aminahue as a potential cut candidate, is he's gonna miss roughly half the season as he recovers from that torn ACL. And I believe his suspension last season nullified his injury guarantees. Anyway, next up is left guard Joe Tooney, who also had $2 million of this year's base salary lock in on the 16th of March, which is fine. I don't think Tooney is going anywhere as he's one of the cornerstones of the entire offensive line. Now, speaking of cornerstones, that would be uh, Legereus Sneed for the Chiefs secondary, at least one of them, and he's found himself in an odd situation, at least according to reports, regarding him being traded very close to being traded, or not even close at all. Most of us know that Snead has been tagged by the Chiefs and has been given permission to seek a trade, and it's also been reported that several teams were interested in trading for him. Well, a week of free agency has gone by and no trade seems imminent, even though over the weekend, it looked like there was a very real possibility Snead was gonna be traded very soon, and it was gonna be to the Indianapolis Colts. Well. Here's what was going on. There's basically been conflicting reports since 
that do not fully add up one way or another. But on Saturday, Destin Adams of A to Z Sports said sources tell him the Chiefs and Colts are ironing out the final details on a trade that will send Snead to Indy in exchange for a 2024 third rounder and an additional pick, probably a day three pick in 2025. Well, Stephen Holder of ESPN shortly after that said the report is not accurate. And as things stood to him on Saturday, he's leaning heavily towards a trade between Snead and the Colts not happening at all. That's obviously a pretty different report than Destin's, but Destin doubled down after this saying he's, quote, gonna let the situation play out, but I stand on the fact that I trust the info I was given from multiple different people here. I never have and never will put out any info that I don't 100% vet and trust. Okay, cool. So one says the trade is very close to happening and the picks have even been discussed and what a trade is gonna cost. And the other one said, nope, this is wrong and it's not even close. Stephen Holder of ESPN even got so annoyed about all of this that he later followed up again saying, once and for all, there is no trade in place between the Chiefs and Colts for Legereus Sneed. I was told this unequivocally from the highest levels of the Colts organization, holy vocab, Stephen. Well, Diana Rossini of The Athletic made it seem like a trade was indeed pretty freaking close between the Titans, as well as the Colts. I had my tweet up ready to go because I really thought it was going to get done last week. The Tennessee Titans and the Indianapolis Colts were really close on getting deals done. So the Titans were close reportedly, but moved off after the Calvin Ridley signing happened because that was very expensive and Sneed wants a lot of money. And then the same with the Colts. That's the sticking point for them is because when you look at this report from Carrington Harrison of 610 Sports, he said Sneed's desire is to become the highest paid cornerback in the league, and that's been the major holdup. Also, his medicals, he's mentioning that in the tweet, and it's about Sneed's knee. I'm sure that does bring some teams some concern because of how much time he's spent on the injury report nursing that knee. Now, Matt Verderam of Sports Illustrated basically confirmed as much also about Sneed wanting Money, when he said this, quote, on the Legereus Sneed front, I'm told the main sticking point has been Sneed's asking price. The Colts and Titans are two of the top teams trying to execute a trade, but Sneed's price is too high per source. For now, Sneed remains in KC on the $19.8 million tag. However, today, this is where it gets a little wild. Uh, Adam Schefter threw a bit of a wrench in the situation when he appeared on the Pat McAfee show and said something that seems to conflict many of these reports. Well, I'll say the exact thing was the two sides, quote unquote, haven't had any conversations. Colts and Chiefs. Is that real? Or, so that was yesterday. hundred percent. Not happening. Now, could that change? Sure. Well, that's interesting. My question to that is, how can conversations between the Colts and Chiefs have never taken place at all if some report that a deal was so close to happening, they had tweets up scheduled to announce it. Something is not adding up. I mean, maybe it's as simple as the Colts reached out to Sneed's representation and the asking price was too high, so they never even reached out to Casey's front office about trade compensation, but that directly conflicts with Destin's report of the trade nearly being done with the compensation being a third round pick in 2024 and a later round pick in 2025. Stephen Holder of ESPN even said that the Colts were talking to Daniil Hunter and contemplating plating a Sneed trade early last week. Then when neither materialized, they moved on to the original plan of re-signing their own players. Well, in order for something to not materialize, you would have needed to have some sort of conversation about it potentially materializing in the first place. I think it's also worth noting that both Stephen Holder and Adam Schefter work for ESPN. Same company getting fed by source or sources and both of them are making the trade seem like it was not even close to happening, while others said it was very close. But why the discrepancy? Why does it matter if trade talks were close? That is the very confusing part to me. But for the time being, it seems like we are in a bit of a stalemate, and whether or not Snead is a cult or somewhere else in the future remains to be seen. There are still teams reportedly interested with Diana Rossini saying she believes the Colts are actually still the front runners of a trade. Do you think Indianapolis is still the most likely landing spot if he is going to get traded? I do think when it comes down to it, I think the Colts are probably the front runner on it. So yeah, maybe we have to wait until much closer to the draft to get an answer or maybe even on draft 
day. Either way, if nothing materializes after all and Snead ends up staying in Kansas City, Carrington Harrison said that the Chiefs are fine with him playing on the franchise tag or at least are prepared for him to do so. Well, they don't have a lot of money to spare at this moment with Snead taking up nearly 20 million, so keeping him on the tag would make things pretty tough. They are currently around 15 million in cap space, but that doesn't yet figure in the cap hits of Hollywood Brown or Derek Nottie. You'll then need several million in cap space for the 2024 draft picks only a few of them will be in the top 51, counting towards the cap right now. But that's why I have a difficult time believing the Chiefs are gonna straight up just keep Snead on the tag unless they create cap space in other ways, maybe a contract restructure here or an extension of somebody else there that have a much higher cap hit. I mean, think about it. Left tackle is still a need. The running back room needs attention with both McKinnon and CEH free agents. They could probably also use another cheap veteran wide receiver, as well as look into another edge rusher with Mike Dana still gone and Amenahu recovering from ACL surgery. Unless they are just looking to accomplish all of this purely through the draft, which is a bit of a risk or a gamble, but in Veach we trust. I'm definitely intrigued to see how it all plays out. And if they do end up keeping Snead, I would certainly not complain one bit if they find a way to make it work. After all, you'd be getting one of the best cornerbacks in the league back for another season, and he would once again be trying to prove himself to earn a bag next offseason. And that's assuming a long-term deal doesn't get worked out between Snead and KC. Uh, that could certainly happen, which would lower this year's cap hit quite a bit. And then there's also the option the franchise tag is rescinded and Snead is free to sign with any team, but that is a much less likely option at the moment, in my opinion. With all that being said, though, you guys got to let me know your thoughts on the trade situation and why you think things are being made to seem so confusing about his trade nearly happening or not even being close at all. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.